Alrighty, we are live. If I got anybody in the chat, actually, just give me a yes or no if you hear me coming in loud and clear. But from the looks of my OBS, it sounds like I'm sending out some type of audio signal and I hit go live at the correct time this time. So uh, glad I was able to do that for you guys. So, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a live of, we're going to do a home theater PC build here. And uh, this isn't a part of my Yes You Can series, budget series, which I normally uh, do a live stream on. However, um, this is going to be a budget build in itself, but a different kind of budget build, a home theater PC build. So, I've got some parts that I've had on hand and I've got some parts that were sent to me from Cooler Master, which we'll get into shortly about this build. So um, I just want to go over a couple few things here, um, getting people into the stream as it is currently, and just a few things, housekeeping items first, obviously, with the mention of Cooler Master. This is a budget, it's supposed to be a fo focused budget build for a home theater PC. And if you guys aren't aware of what a home theater PC is, well, it's simply what it sounds like. It's just something that you would um, build a PC up, put it into like a theater style environment. It could be your living room, whatever. Maybe at, you do have a fancy theater or entertainment room that's built for something like that. I don't, but um, I've got a living room that I want to put this PC into and Cooler Master provided some parts to me. I've been looking to build in this case for a while. They were kind of hard to get a hold of, but was eventually able to get a hold of my Cooler Master rep to help me out with that. So this part, uh, or I'm sorry, this video is sponsored in a, in a sense of Cooler Master providing over the parts that are provided the power supply and the case, which we'll get into later into the stream. So I just wanted to first put that out there at the front. Thank you, Cooler Master, for providing the parts. I'm liking what I'm seeing, and I can't wait to get building in them. So, um, also regarding the parts, guys, they are in the chat. I'm sorry, in the description down below. So, um, if you think you like what you see here and you want to mock this build or alter it in some form or fashion, I've got links to the parts that I'm going to be using in the uh, description below, so you can check those out. Um, there's some variations to pretty much everything that's going to be in this build. So that is another disclaimer I want to put out there. This build isn't supposed to be a flat cookie cutter. Here's how you build a home theater PC for X value. I want to put it out front that I've had some of these parts actually on hand for quite a while. And I've actually done some videos on some of these parts, mainly, uh, a few of the other ones that we'll get to up front here being the CPU and the, and the memory and our storage. But so this isn't something that I've got, you know, a tailored list for you guys to do, but this should be a good example of how to kind of get a home theater PC built for pretty decent value. Um, I will later on in the description go down and actually modify the parts description. I did, you know, for transparency's sake, put out the parts that are that I'm using tonight in the list. Some of those parts are a little bit more expensive than others. And there's really good alternatives out there. So I'll definitely, if you guys are looking to do something like this, pay attention to that. I'll have that updated within 24 hours. So uh, the main things we'll get into and why I'm speaking about that later on in the stream. All right. So now we got some people filtering into the stream. How's it going, guys? Um, a couple other disclaimers, too. I just wanted to cover quick as well. Um, it's just a, a few other housekeeping items. Um with live stream super chats are always very much appreciated and I just want to call it although that's a great way to support the channel it's really um, more of a focus on trying to help you know collaborate and get you know your comments to the top because uh, I've noticed with building and being the only guy that's running the show through and through like literally doing every aspect of the show uh, sometimes it's hard to glance at the screen at the same time and keep up with the chat, especially if the you know there's a, several people in there you know going back and forth. So I just want to call that out. Uh, you don't, definitely don't feel like you have to do a super chat or anything like that. I'm just calling that out as a way to get my attention easier. And obviously, I very much appreciate that to help support funding videos and efforts like this. So I just want to call that out real quick to you guys. And then last thing I got here is my Discord. So I think. Uh, looking at the chat here of, of some folks that have already peeled into here um, I've got a discord channel now. I'm still it's still very much a work in progress I'm kind of new to not new to being a part of discord. I'm just new to 
building a Discord, adding those streams and all those things uh, that help make it better. Um, obviously, if you guys have channel ideas, um, I'm thinking now with NFL starting up and college football, I'm going to make like a sports channel where we can talk about things like that. Um, so definitely let me know. I've got a channel specifically for suggestions in the Discord channel or uh, server if you guys got ideas for that. So that'll help me out. And if you just see me doing something wrong, call it out too. Because like I said, I'm new to administering a Discord server. So I want to make it as um, awesome of a community for you guys. And also one other thing with that, it's probably the best way to see when I'm putting out my content. So if you're a subscriber on YouTube and you're not on Discord, you may have noticed sometimes where you just all of a sudden don't get notifications. And that's, I guess, the, that's the state of YouTube, right? They do that, the weird stuff. But with Discord, you can definitely keep up with, I, that's usually how I keep up with a lot of the followers that I, um, I'm sorry, a lot of the content creators that I follow. All right, so that covers what I want to at least cover as far as just the uh, housekeeping items before we get into the build. And I just take a look at the chat here and just uh, converse with you guys. So see some folks that I normally see. SD1 Rager, how's it going, man? Cooler Master, uh, you like the case, huh? Cool. I I'm really actually excited to build in this case. It I like this color too. It's really neat. And uh, I showed my wife and she really liked it. So this will end up being our home theater PC slash her PC. So I'm glad she likes it. So, <laughs> but I think I like it too. Cause man, you can almost fit that thing in a suitcase. Um, how's it going? Jonathan talks hardware. Thanks for coming in, man. Peaky tech. How's it going, man? Um, how's it going to the other? And how about them Cowboys? Yeah. How about them Cowboys? Luckily, either, although I'm from the Dallas area, I'm not a Cowboys fan, so I can pride myself in saying, ha ha, suckers. So anyway, how's it going, Joker, man? How's, thanks for jumping in. So um, disclaimers aside and uh, some Cowboys uh, trash talk there aside, I'm going to clear off the table a bit here and we'll get started. This is going to be a pretty quick build because as you notice what we got going on here, there's no GPU. So we'll get more into that later. So let me just kind of get the big things out off out of the way. I might actually be able to keep that case just kind of right there in the picture but i'm going to move the power supply and some other things kind of just out of the way real quick that wasn't much <laughs> okay i'm just making room for myself here so um now i've been also trying to improve my streams so i've kind of added uh, i've edited my scenes a little bit so they're a little bit uh, a little bit easier to see uh what i am doing i gotta move my big cup out of the way so i can see what i'm doing um but easier for things to see. So I got a scene where I'm going to have, uh, you know, me and top down and, and top down. I've moved my camera over behind me, my shoulder. Probably the next stream, you guys won't see that because I'm going to get a jig that's going to have a full on real top down, which will make that shot way better. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, so, so anyway, yeah, let's get into it. So like my, normally my builds here, I'm going to start with the motherboard. I'm just going to bring the stream up on chat uh, up in front of me so I can stay with that um, so what we got here is actually again like I said this build is not fully uh, I'm, the intention is not it for it to be a build guide but more of just a hey I'm building a PC it's a home theater PC you can take a lot of cues from it but uh, like I said I'm not giving it a specific target value because some of these parts have super inflated in price and or some of these parts may not be the best choices if you're trying to do something on a stricter budget but this gives you the idea of the kind of the core components but what we got here to start off with our motherboard is the uh fatality ass rock board a b450 board and it's an itx board because it's going into a small form factor case uh main things here i wanted is obviously the form factor being small enough that will fit in a small enough case wi-fi so that way i don't have to worry about anything in regards to that and being a home theater pc i'm not going to have you know network drop plugged into the pc um so I ne it needed to be wi-fi so let's take a look at what we got here i do need a scene switcher here that's definitely for sure for uh, for streaming improvements so this sucker is pretty little as you guys can see um you know hand comparison it's about like the width and height of my hand and I don't have big hands either so that's uh shows you how small this thing is so I'm getting used to my camera angle here and then in the box now I have opened and tested with this motherboard just to make sure that the CPU I was going to be using was actually going to work with this uh, motherboard because I wasn't sure because actually it says on the box Ryzen 3000 ready but we're putting a 5000 series um, 
CPU in here. So I'm going to get out the other small things that I need, which is my IO shield and my M.2 screw. There's some Wi-Fi antennas I'm just going to leave in there because we don't really need that for now. Okay, so here we go. Um, little tiny ATX or ITX board. The GPU slot, obviously, very on the edge. I don't think this has rear... Oh, it does. It does have rear M.2, so that's where we'll be putting the M.2. Uh, that's the only place to put an M.2 is on the rear back here. And, um, yeah, the Wi-Fi. And actually, this thing has USB-C, which is pretty cool. So this thing is pretty full-featured board, and it ain't cheap. That's the thing about um, these types of boards are you're going to pay a premium when you're going for an ITX board. That's just how it is. I did kind of some research, even though this is typically what you would consider to be more of like, a, I guess, a budget focused ITX board. They're really that term doesn't quite exist too well because the amount of money that usually gets put into, you know, designing these types of boards. So it, it can be a little pricey. That That's definitely one of the areas that's pricey. And one of these goes for about 150 on Amazon right now. So that's not too bad, honestly. All right, so for CPU, we'll uh, get that in frame here. So what we got here is a Ryzen 7 CPU. This is a 5700G. Now, I had a, had several videos, actually, the 5700G, where I did some testing when it was the new hotness when GPUs were impossible to get a hold of. Um, I did pay, I think, more back then than they go for now, but these are not a good value CPU, so I want to clearly state that right now is your I, I would say, say if you're going for something like this a Ryzen uh, although now Ryzen is really changing its architecture but I think this would still be a, a good fit considering the price but a Ryzen 5 5600 or I'm sorry what am I thinking the 5600 G yes uh, they go for about a hundred to hundred fifty dollars less than the Ryzen 7 um, so the reason I'm using this is simply because I've had this forever and I'm using it finally. I wouldn't suggest you use this for an HDPC. Um, it could be a good option if you really want those eight cores and 16 threads, but it's not necessary at all. In fact, I would argue to say that you don't even need a 5600G performance, but you know, it's good value. You could probably get away with a 3400G if you ask me. And, and to uh, let you guys know uh, this, the computer that's running this stream right now is a 3400G system. So just a, although it's got a GPU in it. So we're using NVENC. Um, anyway, so let's get back to what we're doing here. Um, so we've got a Ryzen 7 5700G and we're going to install it in the motherboard. Now this is a heck of a performing CPU. So it will game quite well. And I think its performance is almost mirroring a 5600G that like it, like I said, this is a very niche processor um, for its use case um, we're just using it because we have it so definitely go look after a 5600g if you can get your hands on that all right install that guy right in there and close down the latch there we go we're done with that and i'll take a quick sip of water here and check on you guys <clears throat> budget Porsche yeah yeah you're kind of right in a sense like I found uh, like a good I'd say low budget HTPC for a um, yeah a good, good low budget for an HTPC is something around the the range of around maybe 500 this system if you add it all up with the parts that you that we saw here on the table it comes in at around six hundred dollars which isn't really that bad if you consider that you can't get a whole lot much cheaper because when you get smaller and form factor, it commands a higher premium. So I think if you really wanted to skimp and really wanted something very basic, but also provide that kind of home theater, stream some videos online, stream some movies, but not do intense gaming or anything like that, you could probably get away with spending like 450 to $500. Um, Spending beyond that is really just a matter of what kind of gaming you want to do on an HTPC because I'm not really looking to do gaming much. I'll do like some mild level gaming on my HTPC, but if I really want to game, I'll just come into my office and play on my gaming rig. But um, it's more of just ease of use of applications on the smart TV, although 
It's funny you say that. I'm a smart TV. My Samsung, which I'll cover a summary video on this build here next. The reason why I'm doing this, my Samsung TV kind of acts flaky and I'm getting kind of tired of it. So that's why I'm doing this <laughs> in a sense as well. All right, so back to the build here. So we've got to get it cooler mounted actually. I'm just, so for this, the great thing about the um, 5700G, which is um, because we're not drawing a lot of power and going to be doing a whole lot, we are completely fine using a Wraith Prism, or I'm sorry, the Wraith Stealth Cooler. So this is plenty enough for what we're going to do. Um, you might get slightly higher boost clocks uh, if you got a better cooler, but this is the only thing that's really going to be producing heat in the system. So this is going to be plenty fine. And the great thing about it is because of the small nature of this cooler, it's pretty small form factor and it'll work well in this build. So let's get us some thermal paste here. Get it all nice and prepped. This is, this stuff gets kind of greasy. If you guys have been on my other streams, you know, I use this big old tube here, but it's a Chinese brand stuff, but it still works really good. Jonathan Talks Hardware says, I don't use PCs on my TV, so I can get away with using Google Chromecast. Or Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of other good options for, like, Fire Sticks, Chromecast, Roku, and some, most smart TVs have a lot of those options built in, YouTube TV. So I, th I think HT PCs are becoming kind of a, a dying breed. They're kind of more of uh, snobby PC builders that just want another reason to throw, like, a PC into their living room, maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's partially why I'm doing it. <laughs> all right, so we got our thermal paste applied here. Yeah, go ahead and critique that all you want. And I've got the, check this out. I've got this cooler's um, logo spun around and mounted ZTT style as you would, I'm gonna call it from now on. But I used to do this actually before I think even ZTT mentioned it. I got bored, uh, uh, sorry, I've got, uh, Oops, I forgot to take off those brackets. I got a little lazy with spinning the logo around and just ended up kind of leaving it as it was. So we're going to pull these brackets off here. I almost just tried to do that, which wasn't going to get us very far. But yeah, if you want a little aesthetic upgrade for free, I guess spin the logo around. Zach will be happy, for sure. And it's really easy to do this too, guys. There's, um, I did this actually the right way which if I can get a good shot on it here, there's some screws on the underneath side. Um, make sure you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go. Actually, let me get to, there we go. So there's some screws on the underneath side here that if you want to do it the right way, you just take a small screwdriver, undo those screws, and then it'll pop this top shroud off. And then you can take the, uh, take off these four screws and just rotate it 90 degrees. You can honestly just get by, like, literally just yank it on this and pull it off and then twist it and put it back on. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this down like any other stock AMD cooler, but facing the ZTT correct way. And before we plug in the cable, I'm just going to zip down the screws a little bit here. Always in the diagonal pattern. And then go ham on it. Just go till it stops. Yeah, if actually you mounted this cooler where the logo's on the right, you I might have had some problems with RAM. So this uh, is more actually done for a need with an ITX build like this because you, you need the real estate on your motherboard. All right, this is feeling pretty good. Let's get one more. Let's see, oh, didn't quite have that one. Okay, now we're good. All right, so taking our CPU cable here. There's actually, like I said, this, uh, oh, I thought this had two headers. It just has one. That's RGB headers that I'm looking at here. It's actually got, wow, is that three different RGB headers? So I'll just try to make this kind of, nice looking here i'm gonna shove up the xx excess slack there plug it in first okay there we go and i'll take this bit of cable here kind of just tuck it in there nicely 
that can be perfect. You can really get super clean on that, but that ain't too bad. Okay. All right, we're gonna get the motherboard backplate brackets out of the way. We don't need those anymore. Okay, so next we have RAM. So this is a part that has been in several of, of my other videos before. Um, it's just another part that I have laying around. It's the main thing being here. It's, it's it'll work for what we need it to be. It's Ven uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4, obviously 3200 megahertz, but a low cast latency of 16. So good cast latency for the slightly slower megahertz. Obviously, we'll pick up a little more speed from this processor if we went up to say 3600. Again, this is a part I've had, but to at least explain the value. It, they're about 50 bucks, so this is actually a good buy for any kind of budget build. 50 bucks for 16 gigs is pretty nice. And the main thing is it's low profile, so we're not going to stick up over the, the height of the cooler. We're going to stay in just that low, for, low profile format. So we're going to get this installed here. This will be plenty good. Like I mentioned, I could pick up a little bit more performance if I wanted to. But again, this is a home theater PC. I'm not trying to edge out maximum performance it's really just going to be for streaming movies and some very light gaming maybe some roblox for the kids okay so circle back to the chat here take a quick little break <clears throat> am i even going to see the cooler in this build i may not i don't know exactly well this case actually does come with uh, two panel options. Let me put the camera back on me here real quick. So it does come with two panel options. Get this out of the way as well. Or you can do, uh, I'll spin that over here to show you guys since we're about to get into that. So you got just kind of a perforated vented panel. I could, I'm not sure how to take it off yet. And it comes with a, a tempered glass panel. I think I'll probably just do the perforated panel for now so you definitely won't see the cooler if you do that but i'm not doing any rgb or anything like that because i kind of want it although i guess the color isn't super subtle <laughs> but um yeah i mean i don't really have any plans to throw like any kind of crazy rgb or anything like that in here so i don't really care to see the inside um and i think with that panel yeah it does look like it has a filter or at least something to help catch some dust so keep it relatively clean because it will sit a little bit lower i think um, you guys will see that in the summary build, what I do with this PC and kind of how I set it up. Um, it'll sit a little bit lower to the ground, so it might pick up some dirt and junk, uh, more easier than my desktop PC that sits on the desk. So, but we got one more thing here to do on the motherboard, which actually this is the first time I've ever installed an SSD on the back of a motherboard. I haven't done hardly ever. Now I'm thinking I should have maybe done that before I put the cooler on because now it's sitting funny. But I, I haven't done many ITX builds, so, all right. So next part here, again, this is a part that I've been really raving about recently. Um, this, is, this was just pulled out of one of my other rigs that I've recently built but haven't sold yet. Uh, and I needed an SSD to kind of finish off this build. This is a $33 SSD for 512 gigs. This is a team group. This is one of the team group SSDs that I've been recommending on, I think, the last three live streams that I've done. NVMe, 512 gigs for $33. So go on Amazon right now and check that out. I, if you guys are in the Discord channel too, or server, I mean, um, I've linked this where I've seen this thing just coming down faster and faster and faster. Now, it's not an amazing SSD. It's not, you know, PCIe Gen 4. Um, it's not going to probably outlast some of the higher grade SSDs, but for the price, it's just like too hard to pass up for a budget build that I don't have really any, you know, particular critical functional need other than just doing some streaming on whatever, you know, if this thing dies, you know, throw another one in, but I've been using these for a while. I haven't had one die. So that's, I guess, something in itself to say, but check them out. And I think even the one terabyte models go are going for like 65 bucks. So if you guys remember on the Discord server, go down to my hardware deals channel and just click on the link and there you go. I've already got another one on my on the way for another build I'm gonna be done. 
Okay, I need a smaller screwdriver. I thought I set it up. Is it in my iFixit kit? Yes, okay, good. Not running off camera many times like I tend to do. All right, we'll get closer here on what we're doing here because this is interesting how we have this set up. So here's the M.2 slot. And we're going to slide it in just like any normal M.2 slot. So this might be interesting, I guess, if this M.2 had a heat sink on it. We'd have to likely remove it because I'm sure that wouldn't go well unless the cutout is large enough, which maybe actually it looks like. But this, I guess, SSD is proving it's worth here in this type of build where it's not going to stick up off the board and cause any kind of clearance issues. Just got to get that screw started properly. There it goes. Okay, it's on there. Beautiful. It actually looks like there's some perforation on the back too, so if you guys are worried about, oh my gosh, that SSD is going to burn up back there. Uh, I mean, they SSDs like to run warm, um, but there is some breathable perforation on the back, which I think is going to be plenty enough. You know, like Again, this isn't a super crazy fast SSD that's going to be running high temperatures or anything like that. So we've got the board prepped. We're ready to go, ready to drop in this case. So I'm going to get the motherboard box out of the way. Step over here to the chat and see what y'all are up to and grab a little drink of water. Hey, it's the net guy. He joined us. I said, NR200 is legit. Excellent home theater PC for the 5700G. <laughs> Your home theater is better. <laughs> yeah, well, again, uh, if you guys hadn't caught it, um, I would definitely recommend going with a like a 5600G for a home theater build because that is like you can get them like 100 to 150 dollars cheaper, and so that's pretty good value just for a CPU in itself for a six core 12 thread processor. Obviously, it's not going to be quite as fast as like a 5600X, but it's got that built-in APU which allows you to run pretty good graphics. You know, pretty good graphics game. Like a, you can still game on Fortnite on like uh, pro settings at like 100 FPS. So I'd say that's pretty darn good, and um, and obviously allows you to do the simple things like streaming video and all that stuff. <clears throat> all right. Room for two and a two, two two and a half inch drives under the front panel. Okay, so yeah, John, I might need your help uh, just if I start uh, getting lost with this case because. I definitely uh, haven't built in, a, but it looks pretty sweet, so I'm really, really anxious to tear into it. I've built in smaller form factor PC cases, but this is probably the smallest one I've been, I've worked in yet. Oh, Jonathan talks hardware, man. Hey, man, appreciate the, the super chat. Obviously, you as a content creator yourself, you know that the extra little money helps fund our operations, so I definitely appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, but you say, nice build. I'm building an i5 10400F build soon. Oh, nice, man. Can't wait to see it. That uh, 10400F, that's a solid processor. That's definitely evolving to be the 10 series Intels and 12 series are really looking good for budget builds right now, so I that might be, spoiler, what I'm after next. Okay, not, not particularly that CPU, but just a Intel build. So, all right. I haven't looked at directions. Literally just took this out of the box because I want to show off the color. <laughs> I don't know how to open this thing. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to get us on a closer shot so you guys can help me along if uh, I'm doing something funky. Actually, let's go back to the other scene because it at least shows a little bit better. I really like how they... I was not expecting at all the white off, uh, like accents here. It looks really sweet. How does this open? My goodness. I mean, I should look at the directions, I guess. Okay. Looking for like a release button. Oh, what's this? I'm afraid to pull up on that. I might have to go look at the directions, guys. Either that or John, you can help me out, man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little afraid to pull up on this, but I feel like you, that's what you're supposed to do. Let me get my directions or let me see. Okay, nope. Give her the business. Pull, nope. Pull from the, pull from the bottom. I'm pulling from the top. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm on the side. All panels pop off. Okay, okay. Let's see. I'm gonna try the top first. My goodness.
kidding me, man? I'm gonna break this thing. I'll pop off for if it's okay. I'm giving that the business, man. I'm just afraid I'm gonna break it. I trust you, but I, I kinda wanna verify. Oh, shoot, that was easy. Okay, there's a little indentation to get your finger behind and pull that off. Okay, but I'm probably was doing that right up top, just had to pull harder. Okay, so here's the side panel they were talking about. So this is one that you can, well, that's interesting. That's just, just kind of, oh, there's, it's slightly magnetic, so holds in place there. Nice. And so this is where you can replace this panel with a tempered glass panel if you want to. So I'm just going to get that out of the way, put that right there. Now we can kind of see what we're working with here. Let me get my motherboard over here. Okay. So this is the hard drive panel, I think that what John was talking about. I don't need that, so it looks like I can remove that. Since I don't have any hard drives, we already just installed our only drive, which being the NVMe on the back of the motherboard. Okay, I'm literally exploring this with you guys. That's why I thought this might be kind of interesting because ITX cases can be uh, a little complicated. I'm gonna see if I can zoom out actually a little, give you guys a little bit better shot of what I'm doing here. There we go, how's that? All right, and we got some cables tied up here with a little silica packet, get that out of the way. That. And lots of accessories there tied up okay my goodness master box accessories so there's a lot of wow this is actually so this is i would it has a very premium feel i need to get a knife real quick but you can get i think just like the plain black colored one for like a hundred bucks and this one's like they do charge a little bit of a premium for the colors. Um, I think they did a pretty darn good job with the color scheme, though. So that's pretty worth the 25 bucks, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I mean, for what's seeming looking to be quite a well-constructed case with lots of features. Oh, what is this? This is cool. So we do got some RGB. RGB. So they th I don't know if this normally comes with this case. You guys let me know. I don't know if Cooler Master is just being nice to me, but they included some Slick Flow 120 um, RGB fans, that, and they're white, so it'll match the theme. I was wondering, was like, what could this possibly be? That is really neat. I'm, and there's a riser cable underneath. So $130 for this? This is a lot to get with a case, honestly. So there's a riser cable under, oh man, here we go. Yeah, so zip ties and screws and whatnot, so your typical stuff. And a, ri a little mini riser cable, though I won't need it, at least for now. Maybe I'll upgrade it over time, but yeah, there's a riser cable in here. It looks to be like a uh, two and a half to three inch riser cable or so, maybe four inch at the most. But yeah, that's neat. So we won't need that again, as mentioned, because we're not using a GPU. But now, okay, I feel bad that I'm not using one, but that's really neat that they include that. Uh, I mean, I'm really blown away. Okay, and then we got uh, some splitters for our fans. Okay, so we got all that out of the way. So we can start building. I'm gonna start gonna pull up these ties here that are in here. Okay, so these panels all come off. Yeah, here's another pop-off panel on the back. So I'm gonna take that one off too. Oop. A little strip. Oh, that it strips adhesive. Okay, there we go. Now it's holding on there. I get that up here. All right. So we've we're starting to deconstruct the case here. So even though the the parts list is simple, <laughs> list wise anyway. Yeah, this is where we're gonna spend some time, I think, because the case has its complexities like most ITX cases do. That's why you pay a premium for these types of cases because they have lots of 
research behind them, engineering behind them to make things work in a more universal way too. Including that, I'm now I'm kind of curious with that riser cable. If it's, uh, I'll maybe we'll check that at the end of the stream if it is a PCIe 4.0 equivalent cable, so you can run like a really beefy GPU in there. So okay, that cable. So what we, so if you guys have never seen ITX cases before, what usually ends up happening is the power cable is run internally because the power supplies are usually mounted in odd locations. And then they basically adapt it so you can run it through the back of the case and then actually plug it in as normal. So if you guys have never seen that, um, that's one thing you'll definitely run to. Oh, that's cool. The power reset switch. <laughs> Why don't more manufacturers do this? Power reset switch is basically bundled together like a uh, just a full um, harnessed up, bundled up, easy to plug in, like every other cable should be. So. That's really cool. I'm this case is definitely getting a lot of wins in my book. I mean, I was just blown. I just really like the color. So, all right, we've got that. Now we gotta set it down to try to get our motherboard in here, and I'm kind of just exploring it. So sorry if I'm kind of taking a minute to do that, but let me know what you guys think of this case. I'm really liking it. It's pretty darn cool. That's not stock. I think those were add-ons. Mine never came with the extra fans and riser. Okay, so. I need to do a little research then guys are if you guys are handy on Google right now either my cooler master rep was cool to include that which I'm guessing is the case or <laughs> case or um, this was a model that you can buy that has the extras so that's cool um, I'm gonna find a way to install those fans they have cages even on them so I guess you can yeah if you want to keep, open up the case even more to so it breathes better you can put these case fans on there to have a full exposure and full open air to really pull in a lot of air. So that's really cool. Oops, sorry about that. That <laughs> looks like if Ikea made a case. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. So I think though with the ITX, so here's one thing with, I guess that's easy to know with ITX uh, boards is there's only gonna be four standoffs from what I usually typically understand and that's what looks to be our situation here. So we already have standoffs pre-installed on the motherboard tray. Oh, gotta get my IO shield. This isn't a super, super premium um, ITX board so we do have to install the IO shield. I guess this is the only bad thing about this build now is IO shield color is you know completely not within sync so again don't read me too bad on that this is more of just fo focused on being a budget build but yeah I mean we got some the red on the IO shield so bummer but it's still a good looking IO shield just it doesn't fit our color scheme well I guess I could paint that black or even white and then it that actually that painted white would look would pop pretty darn good maybe in the follow-up video I'll take care of that, but we're going to install this for now. Get that in here. Anybody watching some Monday Night Football? I know. I realized I schedule my streams. I try to keep them on Mondays, and realized, oh man, I'm missing some Monday Night Football. But um, not really any of my teams that are super interested in playing are playing, and my fantasy team is done for the week, so. Figure, let's build a PC. Get in there. This thing's got some sharp edges. I'm trying not to slice it with my finger. The IO shield I'm talking about. Thin aluminum metal. Okay, there we go. All the way in. Give you guys a shot of that to make sure you can see that. So again, with a more uh, premium board, you would have that already included. So let's drop in the motherboard. This could be interesting. I'm hoping that I don't should. I'm hoping that by doing this, I can still run the power supply. I'm hoping I don't have to reinstall everything because I wouldn't have to install the power supply first. But we'll find out. And go through the accessory bags bag here to see if we've got motherboard screws, which we should. Yep. Here we go. Looks like everything's jammed in there, and we only need four. Catch 
back up with you guys on the stream. Ah, Trent Vaness with the two dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. Um, is the case mint green? It's called Caribbean Blue, actually. Um, yeah, maybe with the way the camera's catching it, it's more of like a turquoise greenish blue, I guess. Um, but close to mint, I guess you could say. I like it. It's kind of different. It's not your typical black and silver or white. This case, too, does come with all kinds of different colors. So if you guys don't like this color, they have black. I think they have white. They have purple, orange. Um, there are several colors that this case comes in. Uh, and if you didn't catch it earlier, guys, this case, the colors do come at a premium. So it's not a big, huge premium that they charge an extra... I believe $25 for the non-black. I think the black is the very basic standard one. All right, get this last standoff in there. Oh, hard to see. There we go. Okay. We are getting through with this. I'm just a little worried about if I'm gonna have to <laughs> change over the power supply or if I'm gonna have to reinstall the motherboard or we'll have to see how that goes looks like some straps and yeah we'll figure that out okay so speaking of power supply I'm gonna get these these case accessories out of the way for now that is really cool though I was not expecting to receive that so I definitely want to try to make use of that if we got time I'm going to bring in the power supply next. And basically the last component that's going into this build because, as I mentioned, we're not put, putting a GPU in here. It's pretty low uh, power build. Um, so we're, although I've, although it sounds like it's going to be easy, I think it's not going to be quite that easy. So I'm going to get this over here and talk about what we got here next. And get the full screen on me here. So what we got here is... A power supply provided by Cooler Master as well um, and this is obviously tons of power 750 watts so we don't necessarily need this much power not even close for this type of build you would be best off with like 400 to 500 maybe even less honestly um, but this does give us an upgrade path in the future if I decide um, you know I want to throw a GPU in the system and I'll have plenty of power to do that. And the cool thing is, obviously, SFX, you need that for this type of build because you're not going to fit a traditional power, a traditional sized ATX power supply in here. So you need to get an SFX one. And again, that's one of those things that kind of comes at a premium SFX power supplies, just like with the cases when you're condensing things into small spaces, more money and more research is involved with that, which ends up driving up the cost of these parts. But this one, um, I also do have linked in my parts description. And as also I mentioned is this is one that's a bit more expensive and you can find some cheaper alternatives for like $400, 500, I'm sorry, 400, 400, 500 watt power supplies. That'll get the job done for, you know, $20, $30 less, but expect to spend around 150 bucks on something like this. Unfortunately, it's just kind of what it is being an SFX thing. And from what I've heard in recent times too, I don't know how, relevant it still is sfx power supplies have these kind of ups and downs with availability that drive prices up and down uh, they're not as prevalent as your normal size atx power supplies so the price can definitely be volatile uh all right so john the net guy says you can move the psu to the front panel backside oh okay cool yeah and i guess since i don't since i'm not using for GPU, I kind of have better options available to me for that. And I'll read a couple more comments. SD Wondrager says it's halftime. I didn't have a great fantasy week, but good good enough to get the W. I'm defending champ of my league. Oh, cool, man. Um, yeah, I uh, my team was off to a really bad start, and I just did auto draft this year. Uh, I just do one with my father-in-law every year, and my wife joined this year, so I'm I'm looking forward to the the shit talking that she's gonna give me on on the how how well she's doing and I'm not because you know how it always goes the rookie always wins the the league the first year they they're there so I'm ex fully expecting to to hear about it but yeah my team wasn't doing so hot luckily 
unfortunate for uh, my local team, the Cowboys. <laughs> I had the uh, I had Tampa Bay's defense, which holding them the three points was pretty good points for me in fantasy. So, <laughs> sorry, Cowboys. All right. So we're just unboxing here. Let's uh, get a closer look at the power supply unboxing here. I've got some caught up uh, just stuck there. Let's get the power supply out. Now, being as small as this thing is, it's pretty dense and heavy. And this is a fully modular power supply, which again, that's another area you can kind of cut a little bit of cost if you're trying to do a very budget focused build in any regard, really, is you um, just, you can get a semi-modular or uh, I don't know if they make SFXs in anything less than just semi-modular. There might the the thing about it is you're trying to conserve space. So if you're that's why most of them you'll see are fully modular power supplies, meaning you're plugging in everything here as you need it because you're going to need to cover up. You're you're going to need to get back the space. So this has a bracket and some zip ties and a Velcro strap. Okay, I think we might need that bracket for what John was talking about earlier. And let's just pull out the cables that we'll need as well. Sorry for if this is a loud, crinkly noise in your guys' ear. Just trying to get this open. So we're not going to need much, which is the great thing because of the simplicity of our build. So power cable, eh, you know, always need that. Actually, it looks like that's got, that might be standard, like three foot. Feels like it might be a little longer. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just trying to give too much credit where credit's due. Uh, I need, what is this? PSC, that's PCIe. Don't need that. SATAs. So I have two SATAs. This could be, okay, we need a CPU. And, uh, well, I mean, we got CPU cover and that's all we needed. Another PCI, another CPU. So this is definitely a lot in terms of connectability. Lots of Molex. Oh, that, oh, okay. Well, we don't need that either. I'm just... Okay, last one was the... So basically, all we need is PCIe. Oops, I'm sorry. Not PCIe. CPU. And 24-pin. Everything else, go back in the bag in the box. So we're not going to have any trouble with cables. Because we're doing a pretty simple build. So get this out of the way. All right. This is probably going to be the most complex part, trying to figure out the power supply. John says it can mount up front as an option, and it looks like there's an option already right here, which doesn't look all that bad in terms of mounting. I might just try to use that. Let's see, though. I'm not real sure how it's going to work. <laughs> I might have to remove that. I'm thinking there's screws on the back. Yeah, there's two screws on the back, and... Um, looks like the top part might clip in somehow, some way. Yeah, okay, it hangs on. Yeah, all right. So, again, I'm doing this the hard way with you guys. I'm trying to... I just dropped a screw, but I guess I don't need it. I'm trying to explore it with you guys as I go. So, we're going to remove two screws in the back here that are on the motherboard tray. I'll spin it around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now I can see what I'm doing. And get this other guy. And I think that should loosen up that. Yep. It's pretty loose. There we go. Uh, it's, that's what this is for, I guess. As another kind of safety deal. wonder if I can just leave that on and mount this. Yeah, I think that may Maybe just for ease of installation. Okay. I'm going to get the closer shot for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So we've got this. Just it came, it came down. I believe that's, again, we're exploring. Or we could take some time and read the directions and really figure things out. But that's not fun. All right. So... Ah, okay. There are four screws. So let me think here for a second. This should slide in kind of like that. And then as it goes up, or do I need to flip it? I think I might need to flip it. 
Oh, that ain't gonna work because the screws are in the back. Never mind. So I think I had that right. Unless. Let me just see. I'm just test fitting. That's not gonna let the power supply breathe very good because it's internal. But actually, I think that might be possibly as per design because all my cables are now pointing down. Or if I go the other way, if I spin it back around and let the power supply breathe out the back side of the case, how does how's that going to work for us? Yeah. It still keeps the... Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I like that better. Although you can see the gold 80 plus gold sticker, which is kind of an eyesore, but not that not that bad. I guess if I was Zach, you know, I would remove that too. Um, I think that's the way to go here, because then that's gonna allow us to point the cables down, and then br the power supply will breathe out the back, which I think is the best for the power supply. Honestly, get some nice cool air. Don't really have any intake going on right now, so yeah. Let's do that. I'm going to check my chat specifically with John the Neck Guy to make sure I'm doing that right. <laughs> uh, motherboard looks small in that case. Yeah, it does because we've got room for other things like the power supply. Like, it, it'll, I think it'll fill, it'll look pretty, it's going to look a little less filled up than a normal like ITX build um, that has a GPU, but. I think it's going to still look pretty good and filled up because there isn't a whole lot more extra space here. <clears throat> All right. So I think I'm going to just YOLO and go with this. See how it turns out. Seems like based on what John said, there's multiple ways to skin this cat. So we're going to get back to the close-up. I like... Let me know what you guys think about, at least for now. I, like I said, I think this is the last time I'm going to have this camera on a tripod. Uh, but I noticed when I had it facing at me and down, it was catching a lot of glare from the LEDs behind me, and I didn't like how that looked. It kind of looked, it was kind of just overexposing, making it look kind of, oh yeah, there's this bracket. What, do I even need it? Um, hmm, that might just be if I need it or not. But yeah, I was doing that, and I think this view is a little clearer for you guys to see what I'm doing. Hopefully next stream we'll have a jig that is complete top-down to make this easier. They included two sets of screws for me. That might be just for the... I don't know if that's just extra or if that's for modularity of mounting. Probably probably the latter. Alright, let me get these PSU screws out. Let's see, get this set up. Oh, you know what? I might need that bracket after all, I think. Yeah, or just an alignment thing going on. Kind of curious. This bracket seems really big, though. So you do something like this. That might be if you're, I don't know. I'd have to look at the directions. I don't want to waste your guys' time with that. Okay. I already got one screw on there. Drop that back in there. Get things lined up. You know what? I'm just gonna take a quick glance, whoops. Just to make sure I'm not crazy. Okay, I see where John's saying you can mount it up front. Looks like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm doing this right. So one option is option A here, where it says you just mount to the bracket, and then that points out the back of the case. Another option at the front, where you kind of do the same thing, just reorientate the cage or bracket. So looks like we're gonna do it. We're on, we're on track. Just want to make sure of that I'm trying to prevent having to redo things for you guys because this is not quite the you know standard build that I do. The thing I don't like about this is it 
doesn't quite it doesn't quite sit directly on this cage. Let's see what I'm doing. Oh, this is fun. I can't see my holes here. Okay, right about there. I think it's gone. Nope. Oh, got it. I'm in a very strange position trying to get this thing. Okay, there's one. Get this other one on the other angle, opposite side. Need to need more light. into it yep nice all right thing I'm most happy about is you guys can see what I'm doing it's good top down I'd have this laid flat so I can't wait to get that set which might uh give you guys some sneak peek pics of me setting that up in my discord server so go join so you can see the progress of that Now, one thing you always want to remember when you are mounting an internal power supply like this that adapts a power cable, make sure you flip it on first. I've ran into that problem before. <laughs> All right, so then what we're going to do is bring it up. Actually, you might want to move my power cable first. Could be hold that out of the way. Should grab the interior part right there. Okay. And then I'm going to spin this around. Try not to drop the power supply in the process. There we go. And grab those two screws that secure this bracket to the back. Now hold on the back side here as I'm pushing so I don't shove it straight out. And I just thought about what I should have done. <laughs> get uh, my power supply cables installed on the power supply first then put this thing in but I think I'll be okay is that going in right oh, that was a little a little off there we go so if anything we're exploring the heck out of the features of this case which was really my sole intent of making this a live stream um, you know obviously cooler master wanted me to show off the case and all but you know what, what better way to do that than by doing a live build and just going at it so all right I'm plugging in this power supply adapted cable interior adapted cable into the power supply there's that it's on it's making good progress it's in all right I'd say that's a cause for checking the chat and uh, taking a quick, quick sip of water Um, okay, uh, let's see. John says, bra oh, yeah, brackets for ATX. That's right. Oh, man, thanks for that. Yeah, because I was like, this looks huge. So, like, if you, for some reason, wanted to use this bracket in an ATX build, this adapts the smaller form factor power supply because we've got a lot of juice, 750 watts. That's enough to power some high-tier power uh, graphics cards these days and put it into a build that only has an ATX mounting um, uh, drilling locations in the case so this is just it, it's for it's not necessarily specific for this power for this case because it, the power supply is obviously not sold with the case so it allows you to have more modularity with other cases other than just small ITX cases like this they include a lot of good uh, zip ties here nice okay getting some junk out of the way obviously the bracket we won't need uh, I don't know. We'll see what we need on those Velcro straps. Just realize I'm throwing things on my keyboard. Hopefully, I'm not pushing buttons here. All right. So let's see what the chat says. RTMF or the chat? <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm trying to keep up, guys. Um, what I need to do is I need to get a setup where I, I'm trying to make sure I'm I'm seeing switching better. Which again, I need to do a probably a switcher 
I know John's got all the cool stuff for that, so I'll probably be hitting you up on what's the best way to do that, to monitor and switch scenes better. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> JST. Yeah, actually, he just started up his podcast, the RTMF show again. Um, I caught a, the first new episode, so I was happy to watch that. I like the, I kind of like the the format of that show. It's just kind of very nonchalant, you know, just kind of talking about whatever. And they try not to focus so much on it being PC stuff, but you know, it it goes that way sometimes. All right, so let's connect up some cables here. Again, I guess I can go back to the overhead because that'll be the easiest way to do this. Also, I need some light right straight down if I get that overhead, so I might be mounting a light too. That would be good. Okay. All right. So we've got HD audio. I'm not going to use HD audio. I don't have any particular need to use HD audio. I'm not going to plug it in. So I'm just going to tuck it away somewhere. I don't know, I guess just get out of the way for now. So we got USB 3 and the very nicely put together um, front panel connectors. Man, I wish every manufacturer did this. I don't understand. There must, there's must. there got to be a particular reason why it's not done because I think some other boards, the placement of the pins are different than others. But I think this will work for us. I think we're just going to give it a shot. Usually power LED plus minus is on your top, is your left side ones. Yeah, I think this should be good, so I'm going to plug it in. See what happens. That was very smooth. Nice. Cooler Master doesn't make motherboards, so, I mean, it's not like this was tailored for a particular motherboard. I just got these twisted up, so I'm redoing this. All right. Okay. And USB 3.0. Hmm. That's an ugly location. I might have to take time. This is the thing with ITX builds, guys, is you really got to take time with cable management. Lord. <laughs> I wonder if I can just come in from the top. This is... Hmm. I'm not... I, I kind of don't really want to just go straight across. I want to make it look kind of clean. Maybe if I go back, side. I don't know if the cable is long enough if I do this. Nope, it's not. All right. Well, we'll just have to get crafty with cable managing and tying things up. And make sure this notch is on the right. I almost plugged it in the wrong way, actually. Can't really see what I'm doing. Going over the top for now. And I think what we can do is just kind of bring these cables down and under a little better. Okay. Speaking of cables, getting close to being done here, guys. We're going to plug in these modular cables into the power supply, which I probably should have done first before installing it. But YOLO. Oh, boy. That's not going to be fun. <laughs> yes. I'm glad I chose to do that. I guess I could... Drop the power supply bracket out. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay. All right. So let's see here. So which side? Which? Usually CPU. Okay. Here's one thing to remember too is this is always what, you know, I, I take some extra time to make sure I'm doing right with modular power supplies is a lot of the good ones will have a power supply end side because if you look at the header or the uh, cable it looks basically exactly the same oh here here you go both ends look the same so if you're looking at it like this you're like well which one goes which way but they did the math for you there so that goes on the PSU side this will go on the motherboard side so that's nice now I just gotta figure out where plugs in. Might have to turn this thing all the way upside down just to see what the heck I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if I can remove. John says panels come out, so I might, might do some more of that just to be able to see, but actually I think I got a pretty good view here. So just looking here. Oh boy. There we go. Oh, interesting. Okay, I see. Oh, really? Is 
that how they broke apart the 24 pin? Yes, they did. Uh, I don't like how they did that. So there's a top, is that 4, 8, 10 pin? Because the motherboard, 24 pin, breaks apart into a 10 and a 14 pin. So the top part here, yeah, it's like a, instead of being next to each other, I guess this isn't terrible, but just because I can't see what I'm doing really is the problem because I chose to make this more difficult for myself. There we go. That one in. Luckily, we literally don't have much to plug in. Otherwise, this could be a really... Otherwise, I probably wouldn't. Actually, I could probably do the bottom one first. But as I was saying, otherwise, I probably would take the power supply out and do these and then plug everything back and then put the power supply back in. Okay, I think that's in. Feeling, nope, it's not. Make sure my notch end is up correctly. Sorry if I'm banging my mic here. I'm trying to see what I'm doing as well as get this plugged in. Okay, just yanking back on it. Make sure it's seated. And the other one goes the other direction. Yes. Okay, that's not terrible. The way the cable is kind of wired too is kind of meant for this so it's not bad it's just bad because i don't have a lot of room to work with all right so there's that and then we just need to get cp or psu cpu as i was mentioning use the cpu side first and i'm just looking for the labels on the power supply that indicate that a lot of times yeah it says pcie slash cpu so you can choose basically any eight pin and plug in so i'm just going to get the one right next to it that way, if we need to plug in anything else, we just go right on down the line. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Just had to turn the case upside down. All right, right side up. And I'll turn this screen on so you guys can see. So looking pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna feed these through this side. Like so. So I'd stick them out that end. Now, let's see. Yeah, I think this is where I'm just going to kind of tie everything up together. The, oh, the CPU I can keep on the other side, I think, though. Yeah. Because it's long enough to come back around and up through, hopefully, an opening. I can squeeze it through. Yep. Looks like it. Nice. And that is. Ooh, I hope I got enough cable length. Check my notch. Okay. Sorry, guys. This is just really hard to get on camera. But the CPU EPS power is way up here on the top left, and its angle, it's spun in a different. It's not where the notch is normally at the top of the motherboard. It's on the left side. So I'm just trying to fiddle this cable in here. I'm basically feeling what I'm doing because I can't even see what I'm doing. Come on. Make sure I have this plugged in, right, John? <laughs> oh, come on. Sheesh. This is the most difficult cable to plug in I've ever plugged in. Holy moly. Oh. oh, I thought I had it started. There we go. Whew. That was a lot to work with. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, that actually kind of holds the other kind of cables down. This might be fun to try to do some RGB lights on later. With those fans that were extras. I feel like I owe it to Cooler Master to plug this in, so we'll try to do that. All right, and then... We've got just cables kind of spitting out everywhere here. I really can't see what I'm doing, so I'm going to spin it like this so you guys can see it from the other view. So we're just getting this cable. I'm just kind of feeling for the notch. Okay, it's on that side, facing outward, and getting the 24 pin plugged in. Just 
tip it back up. Support it from the back side as I plug it in. Okay. It's feeling good. All right. Yep. That won't be too bad. We just have to... That's the thing with ITX builds, guys. They're not really made to be... I mean, you. there are some PC builders that uh, really do up ITX builds very nicely. And you can make them look really, really nice. Um, I would say you almost want to, if you're really trying for that, get some custom length sleeved cables. So that way you can basically use up only the space you need. We're obviously after budget here. That's the theme of the channel. We don't do these crazy super high end builds, although, you know, I'd love to one day. I try to target more volume of builds than I do making the most elegant pieces of art. Though I do pride myself in the way my own personal rig looks, so I probably spend the most time on something like that. Okay, so not bad, guys. Pretty much done. Um, cables are plugged in. I didn't run that HD audio cable because I'm not going to be using like a, a headset. Like this is the headset I typically use. So if I, I'm probably just going to use like what's on being played through the speakers. If this is an HD PC, so no need to really plug in HD audio. Obviously, that's just there for sake of being there for being just a PC. Um, so I'm leaving that out. Just tucking it behind the motherboard. Uh, did I trigger somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John, I had to. Although, we'll see, man. I haven't turned this thing on yet, but... <laughs> okay, so, I mean, the PC build is done, and that was chattering with you guys most of the time and fumbling a little bit with an ITX build in about an hour. Um, obviously, it's not insanely pretty to look at on the inside for, as far as cables go, but I want to I wanna take a peek at these fans. We got a little bit of time to do that. What do you guys think? Should I do it? I mean, this is kind of neat. Let's see. What would be best mounting location for these fans? I don't need a whole lot of intake or exhaust, to be flat, quite frank. Um, I kind of... This isn't a lot of, I mean, that's a fair amount of space underneath the case to draw in air underneath. There's a little fan grill there. I kind of almost want to show off the fans a little bit, though. Let's see, the side panel. Let's see, let's see. Now, I think these just kind of came with grills, like if you think you need them or not. I think it might be cool to like mount them both up top. So this panel apparently pops off, according to John. Yeah, I see the plastic kind of rivet things going on now. Oh, is there like a... Yeah, there we go. Gave it the business. Okay. So I'm thinking I might... Oh, man. <laughs> I should have taken this off to begin with. A lot of my... A lot of the things I just did would have been even easier. Oh, well. You live, you learn. You yellow. So I'm thinking I might mount these fans right here. At least gives... I mean, there's really no intake to this build, but I really don't need it. Um, and then if you had a GPU, let me kind of get a... Kind of a... See if I got a larger GPU here. That would kind of give you an idea of how that would mount. I'll get my broken Strix 970... So, like, if you had a GPU, obviously, it would sit here, like, like that. So then, really, actually, I think it would be best for this. Well, I mean, it'd be probably best for it to mount the fans down below to push air up in. So you do have some intake. But the, the highest heat object in this system is the... Uh, now, I guess, okay, so if we mounted the... Or if we put on the tempered glass panel. Then you'd be able to see the fans a little bit. Uh, at least be able to show them up because you're not going to be able to see them too well. Even with this meshed cover because this is kind of permanent. I mean you can, looks like, take it off. You can peel back these tabs and actually take this out. And then that's probably why the grills are there because that would be an exposed fan. 
I do have young kids though, um, and where this is going is going to sit in our living room. So even though these grills are here, I know my five-year-old will find a way to shove something in there and either jam up the fan or it, you know, or hurt himself. So I think I'm going to mount them on the bottom just for yellow's sake, right? Give us some intake. Don't really have an exhaust, but it doesn't really matter. We don't have a lot of high heat. Obviously, I'm going to take these grills off and then have plenty of good fresh air feeding the power supply and feeding the system and just kind of normal airflow, just heat rising up and out. So what do you guys think? I think that's a good... Yes, yeah, so I guess at that point I'm using the tempered glass, at least for the showcase of this build. Um, I guess I'll just have to, if I end up not going with the tempered glass after all later on down the line, then I'll just have to focus on trying to keep the thing dust, dusted out, which shouldn't be too bad. No screws required. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, yeah, so these, uh, well, I mean, that is the fan grill, but... It is interesting how this works. I'm gonna have to figure it out. Was there a uh, little piece of instruction with these fans? I think there might have been. It's made for this case because it came as an accessory, so yeah, there isn't anything on it. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> what am I gonna do? A CPU that's submerged submerged in water. Well, I don't think a PC would run too well in water. Are you thinking about um, mineral oil? Because there's been uh, plenty of builds like that. Uh, you can find them on YouTube and stuff. But yeah, that's definitely a, kind of a niche thing that people do. Where basically you don't need airflow anymore. Because the oil becomes the coolant that's displaced throughout the entire case. But you also have to have an airtight case that basically like a fish tank. So... That would be kind of neat. Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't do that, but I don't really know the first thing about that. And I've heard those are hell for maintenance. Like, I mean, you got to drain all that out, and that mineral oil is ugly and nasty and stinky. And so, I don't know. Okay, I got to figure out. I don't need these fan grills on, so it looks like a screw just kind of holds them on, maybe. Oh, too small curious how this works oh yeah okay so that's interesting I think what I'm yeah this is just gonna potentially just mount like a normal fan then give you guys an idea what I'm up to with this so I'm just taking these grills off this would be if you're mounting it up oh shoot didn't realize I had a <laughs> had a screw on my screwdriver that'd be if you're like mounting it up top and you decided to Looks like if you decided to take this mesh out completely, again, that looks like that's not easy to do. Um, but that, you know, would at least protect you. Or I guess you can even do it from the bottom, but I don't know. I mean, the side, side doesn't, has holes, so it's going to prevent you from sticking your fingers through there. So I'd assume it's if you want to mount it up top and really open it up. I guess if you're putting some really powerful components in here, that's going to draw a lot of heat. Let this thing breathe. That is the thing with small form factor builds. They're heat boxes. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that just come off like a normal fan. Nice. That's neat. I want to make maybe possibly use. So then what we're looking at here. Is there an RGB controller for this? <laughs> now I'm trying to wonder. I guess, because this is, it looks like an RGB fan, but there's no RGB to it. It's just a four, four pin PWM. Maybe it just, maybe they just glow white. What does it say on the box? Accessories. Okay, fan. Additional, oh, toolless fans. Yeah, okay, so that's if you're mounting them at the top. That's what they're talking about with toolless fans. So if you're mounting it at the top, this thing would just plop in there like that. That's cool, actually. I'm going to try it. That's actually really cool. This sinks into these rubber gaskets. Boop, boop. Oh, man. 
That's kind of neat. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Okay. So I guess the, the cage would be... <laughs> I think it's kind of unnecessary. For inside, what are you going to be doing? Sticking fingers inside? I don't know. What do you guys think? What should I do? Mount them up top for exhaust or mount them down below for intake or do one of each. This is on you guys. You tell me what you, what I should do. <laughs> top fans. I'm kind of thinking top too. That way it's not like pulling in junk from the bottom because the, this thing doesn't stand up very high. Uh, obviously, that would look kind of crazy. <laughs> So when is the stream <laughs> streaker going to be in by the stream? John with the $5 super chat. Appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, he's in bed. So <laughs> if you guys have caught uh, my previous stream with John, and I think he did it once before too, didn't he? Um, my son, when he's hot, he, you know, it's hot in Texas. He, dude just like YOLOs, takes his clothes off, and he, he usually, you know, isn't completely naked. But, you know, he, he just... I'm taking my shirt off and run around my underwear, and that's what he does. So he, I think right right when um, we started a stream last, uh, when was that? Like two weeks ago or so. <laughs> right as you're like, hey Dan, tell us about yourself, and then my son runs through the camera. I'm like, oh god, I got to get this room closed in. So this room I'm in is actually not closed in. I'm working on that. Um, that might be a. That's going to probably be a 2023 20, project. But yeah, <laughs> that was funny. He's sleeping. He's got school in the morning. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put these fan girls back on because I don't have to worry about screws. I know that these fans didn't come with screws anyway, so I guess they're going in the tap. At least, well, there might be some here in the accessories somewhere. But oh, they provided these. Oh, that's probably for the SSDs actually. Yeah, first hard drives. This is really cool. I've ever actually never done. Well, I mean, I've done those like rubber toolless fans before, but like this is very purpose built. I like it. Ta da! Nice. And I realized, damn it, I was thinking I might have done that. Fan cables, I need them probably going out back, and I got them going towards the front. Dang it, man. Dang it. It's all right. They're toolless. I can just swap them, swap them real quick. That's the beautiful part of this. So we spin it. Well, this is cool. I guess this at least made the simple PC build interesting. What do you guys think so far? I like the color a lot. Mm. Digging it. Oh man, that one's. Come on. Give it the business. All right, bedtime for me, says Pinky Tech. I'll catch the replays and see if it posts. Build started at 9. Oh wait, Eastern for the timekeepers here. <laughs> All right, yeah. Hey, you're me. You're you're definitely the timekeeper. One of them. Pinky likes to give us give John and I a hard time. How long it takes us to build PCs? But good night, sir. Thanks for joining in. I'm sure I'll be collaborating with you again here soon. So have a good night. All right, there we go. Can I get that all the way in? Okay, I like it. So these must just be a white color, which is actually very fitting for the build, so that's perfectly fine. I think, well, actually, I forgot. They they provide a fan splitter too, so I only need one fan header, which I think this board has like three or four of them. So we should be good. Alrighty. Blue LV702 says, Home Theater PC. Never heard of this before. Interesting. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, thanks for joining in on the stream. This is something that... It's kind of a niche thing. Um, obviously, like a Roku, a Fire Stick, smart TVs kind of replace the function of having a dedicated device that does online streaming. It's kind of niche for like PC builders to have an excuse, I guess, to, to build another PC. But the thing I want to be able to do on it too is like, you know, game a little bit too. Uh, play some easy, simple games like 
you know, say if the wife and I are watching a movie and she falls asleep, I can just uh, flip on to some games real quick and not even leave the couch. So she didn't hear me say that. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to get this adapted, get this closer in on so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're just plugging in the, okay, so that's the four pin. Oh, my. I want to be able to send PWM to keep this thing as quiet as possible. So that, those are two three pin connections. I guess that's okay. All right. I know there's, I forget what the purpose is. So we got two three pins and one four pin. The four pin, I think, it obviously is the PWM, but that's only going to one fan. I guess I'll plug one into that, and I think if I plug the other one into the three pin, at least we have power PWM control going through this harness. And now I gotta find a header. There's one right there. Is there one like lower? I think there is. I think I might just go with that one right next to the RAM though. So. What I want to do here is I want to feed these cables through the back side. If you guys can see what I'm doing, kind of sort of sorry, this is kind of a weird angle. Just feeding the cable the fan cables through the back. So that way when I flip this like this. Pull them through, pull that through. Nice. And then I'm going to, uh oh, I probably should have waited. Shoot, I should have waited. Plug in my fan header to the motherboard first before I s smack this back down. This thing is tight. That's good, I guess, because if it was loose, then it would rattle or show some quality lackings. All right. This is weird to try to do this. Sorry, guys. This is just really bad angle for you because I can hardly see what I'm doing. That is a fan header, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. This is a, probably a pretty good spot for this, though. Get on there. Okay. So what we did is plugged in our fan header right here oop, next to the RAM. So now pull those fan cables back down. That is going to be a funny tuck. Come on. Ha. Nice. Ha ha. All right, and there's some, some, very little space. Is there anything to, any space to tie off on down here? Not really. Well, I, I don't like to typically go through cable management with you guys on streams. I mean, let me know if that's something you guys like to see, but I feel like you can go back and forth with, eh, I like that. It, it, if you're anything like me, it's like, it, it takes a while to kind of, all right, let's see, I mapped this out here. And then, so I, I'm more or less just trying to get this thing built for you guys to see it operate than to make it look in its prettiest form. It'll look in its prettiest form later on when I do the summary video of this build. It'll be similar to what I do with like my uh, um, Yes You Can series builds where you uh, kind of get the kind of get the summary, the cliff notes of the build. And if you're really interested in the itty, uh, itty bitty nitty gritties of the build process, then you know here it is on display. So I'm gonna get some panels on real quick. Get some more of this junk out of the way. 
those fans were pretty cool and pretty easy to install and I, I imagine there's going to be a white glow so it'll look really good with the case colors already jeff wayne with a five dollar super chat hey man appreciate that very much um no message but thank you for donating and uh th helping out the channel because that obviously uh doing builds like this that always helps helps fund the fund this process and keep us going so thank you very much sir okay this was the back oh yeah so i'm not going to need this panel this is where you would uh, you know start filling up some space but this is here if you want to mount some extra drives which we're not going to need so I'm just going to leave it off. It's not really, it's pretty flimsy. It's not built for case rigidity or anything like that. It's just kind of a simple mounting solution for mounting extra drive. So great thing about this thing now that I'm getting used to how this case goes together is these panels just pop on nicely. So I'm putting on the rear one real quick. Just want to make sure I got this dust filter thing, dust mesh correctly in the right spot am i going at this oops oh i'm going at it upside down okay so there's a lip for it to catch on the bottom beautiful that was easy so how about we do some tempered glass anyway so you guys can see all right i'll get the panel it's in a little box over here usually i'll just leave it open but i kind of want to take a look at the tempered glass panel that they provide in the box so here it is and it looks pretty simple as far as insulation just grabs the bottom lip so let's do it Ooh, game's getting good huh i guess that's why uh john's getting getting quiet now he's a uh, he's from S seattle washington area that's his, his boys playing tonight all right, so check out the presentation of this. Very nice. I mean, they took care of making sure that this panel that comes separately is well protected. So nice, some nice foam here to protect it. Very nice. And we've got the white accents that go with the PC. So very cool. So I'm going to get this out of the box. Throw that on screen here for you guys. I'm really liking what I did with the camera. I think this allows you guys to see things better. Ooh, this thing has got some weight to it. So it's not cheapo tempered glass. Of course, we got our. It's actually a sticker that we can throw on there if we wanted to. Now I'm looking for a peel here on the inside. Is there one? I don't think there is. Uh, I feel like there is. I'm just not seeing where it starts. Uh, maybe there is not. Let's see. Uh, oh. Okay, maybe there isn't. Okay, just don't want to make sure. I do see the one on the outside. It looks like there is not one on the inside that I can easily see. Wait, hold on. I think I see it. Can't tell if that's the paint. I'm pretty sure it's there. Wow. It's very well put on where the point where it's very transparent. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it <laughs> for now. Okay, so we're gonna get that on the front. We'll do the peel on the front. And try not to get our hand on the other side. So this should just pop in. There we go. Since we got the might have to feels like it's binding up on the top panel actually Make sure I got that set in there correctly that's how it's supposed to go I might have to pop the top panel a little bit and then come down yeah well that doesn't make for ease of opening but uh, there it goes just had to give it a little business okay I'm just afraid with like you see those horror stories with tempered glass panels People hit just the right edge and shatter. It goes everywhere. So 
that would have not have been a very uh, good way to send this build off. So here we go. Got a peel going on here. Normally you guys wouldn't catch this with me because a lot of my builds I end up reselling and I leave the peel on. So since this is mine, there we go. Always got to do that satisfactory thing, right? Okay, I'm going to take a quick drink of water and we're going to... Yeah, the cables don't look good, guys. Trust me. Um, I can't wait to actually get it. So I'm going to... Another good reason, right, to join the Discord server is I'm going to get this nice and cabled up or cable tied up, make it look real nice. And then I'll uh, throw some pictures out on the uh, show off channel, uh, PC show off and setup show off channel in my Discord, as well as probably put some maybe a YouTube community post out there. And um, I'm going to get full screen on me too, by the way, because we're about to do a post test. But And then also uh, there will be a summary vi video of the performance that you can expect and the, my, the way I'm going to practically use it in my living room. So I'd like to show you guys that. Um, that's just too much to cover. I can't really cover that in the stream because I got everything set up here. So, but we are going to make sure this thing can turn on and post. So let's do that. Sorry, that was kind of loud. I am out of my water. All right. So let me grab monitor and it is in this room this time. Uh, I know John likes to point out, okay, he'll be back in 10 minutes while he's getting his monitor, but I got it right here. I do need to go get, that's another thing I want to get. There's always new things to get one of those easy fold-out monitors that like um, Greg Salazar has uh, a few other youtubers I've seen use those that would be perfect for this situation but this monitor is pretty simple so I'm just gonna plug it in here give it some power excuse me and I need HDMI I had that sitting over here where I could easily reach it Put a panel on top of it. Whoops, a daisy. All right. Need to get a power cable for the PC side. Get in there, HDMI. Why are you fight me? Oh, that stinking lip. Ah, I put the, uh, shoot. I hate when that happens. I put the lip of the IO shield where you're supposed to bend it back. It's bending over the top of the port, so I need to bend it out of the way for now. I need to get a, don't my pocket knife will probably work just fine. I'll let you guys see what I'm talking about. Get this monitor out of the way. Of course, I can't just plug things in and get... What I, what's going on here is... Oh man, I'm touching my tempered glass. Is that little lip right there. I gotta get that out of the way. It's preventing me from plugging in my cable. Actually, maybe I wonder if I just jam it. Let's try jamming it. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay, there we go. All right, I'll save you guys some time. All right. And we got power that we got to plug in here. Should have a cable. Oh, I forgot to run one. Let me grab a cable for that. Sorry, guys. I got a spare one sitting out that isn't all tied up. gonna reach Oop. oh my tepper glass it was so pretty okay there we go plugging this guy in and switch my scene real quick All right, guys. Three, two, one. Oh, didn't have the power plug all the way in. That's been in. 
<laughs> well, here's the fun. I did turn that power switch on, right? Do that. Plugged in, right? Yeah, it's plugged into power. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it gets more interesting. The front panel connector was in was bound up in a harness. I'm wondering if maybe I do have something not right there completely. Big oof. So let's see what we got going on here. I can get the monitor out of the way real quick. Cannot work with this thing right here right now. Oops, there goes that other cable. That or I accidentally hit the uh, power switch internally on the power supply, so I'm going to check that first because that would be an easy quick fix. Jeez. It says tight. <clears throat> my goodness. Now I'm going to mess up my tempered glass. Make sure that switch is on. Yeah. It's on. Line in. So the only thing I think of is front panel. It happens. But now I can't see it too well. Did I plug it in the wrong spot? I might have. I think I did actually. Nope. Don't take a picture. Let's uh, let you guys. Hopefully see what I'm seeing a little easier. Not really. I need light. Putting it on my phone real quick. Goodness. Oh. Yeah. Pretty sure I had it backwards. Okay. Pretty sure we're good there. Alright, I'm leaving the temper glass off at this point. You guys saw that process. Oh, my HD audio, I need to tuck it back there. Okay, let's get back to the previous scene. There we go, you can see the build a little easier too. Grab my monitor. Cabling my monitor and PC. Pretty sure I had that uh, harness just flipped around the wrong way. Hoping that's all it is. And I'm not going through all this again, needlessly. Get the power cable filled down. Stay there. <laughs> there it goes. Somebody hold it for me. There we go. All right, there we go. Plug this guy in. Three, two, one. Am I not pushing this button right? Oh, no way. Well. Okay, I didn't have the panel on <laughs> all the way down. I don't think I was pushing the button down right, but now it's still not turning on. <laughs> okay, maybe I did have that. Oh, I'm being such a dummy. We'll figure it out, guys. No, I was trying to keep that up here. <laughs> the struggle. Man, I did do all that needlessly. Just get this over here instead. What happened here? Okay, let's see. That's the thing with these very small motherboards. It's very hard to read the printouts of everything. That looks right. Oh, nope. 
Okay. Yeah. Fairly confident I had the header plugged in the right way. The panel was the main cause. Wasn't expecting that. So, yeah, I don't think I was pushing that button down all the way previously. Okay. Let's go around here. Luckily, with that harness, man, that makes things at least super quick and fast for swapping those cables around. This monitor is driving me nuts with these squeaky feet. Sorry about that, guys, if you're hearing that. All right. And my power cable fell down again. I'm just making it fun, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying my misery. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Go back to full scene on me. See how much you guys are laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta have some troubleshooting every now and then with a build stream. And I'm keeping it as real as possible, so as you guys know, this is real. Alright, three, two, one. Yay! Fans are spinning. Perfect. Okay, now let's see if we got a post. Looks like it's going through some things. Come on now, come on. So the fans slow down and then ramp back up. Waiting for like a solid light on my monitor. Should get it. Fans just really spun up there for a second. Came back down. Still waiting. Oh. Yeah. That's that dang BIOS error. I don't have an extra keyboard to clear that. I'll just plug in one from the stream PC real quick. I'll be very careful with that. Excuse me. Don't disconnect the stream in the process. It's like writing across my network cable. Well, this will test my USB 3.0 connection too. Why not? Here we go. Yeah, it's the uh, the old bit locker error. Okay, we're gonna hit new. No. Should jump into BIOS. And since we are using an old uh, SSD NVMe drive that has an OS on it, we should just see it uh, boot into Windows here momentarily but we do have a post so we have a running machine so I'm feeling pretty good and confident about that I said no dang it those fans are spinning I guess they they don't light up I don't see them lighting up tilt it up for you guys they're spinning so maybe they're just uh, I mean I, I didn't see any RGB connectors on them doesn't mean that they can't light up a solid color, but I thought that might light up like white or something. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, I mean, there we have it. I guess I'll throw the, I'll throw that panel back on because it kind of accents the the build colors nicely with the white trim. I don't think it's being stupid. I had a different CPU on this motherboard before, and so it's like bugging out. Pretty uh, good and transparent too. We'll hit no one more time here. Let it go through another boot up. But <clears throat> as you guys can see, we made it. Oh man, you guys are throwing money at me for making a PC boot. Dang. Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate that very much. Um, so as you can see, there we go. We are now logged into the bare OS that I had on that SSD, and we've got a functional HT PC. So. It uh, seems like uh, some of you guys might not have, like, you know, we try to address what this was, HTPC. Small, the main thing is it's small form factor. I'm going to get my monitor out of the way because it always does weird things to my camera here. Um, <clears throat> but small form factor that you can put in anywhere, like your living room or I mean, even if you just want a small, a small form factor build to sit on your desk and you don't like 
giant gaming rigs. Those suckers are pushing out a good amount of air. They're not real loud either. Cool. Um, so, I mean, you can make use of it whatever you want. Obviously, we've got plenty of room still inside this one to throw in a GPU if we wanted to. Uh, it's not really what I'm after with this build. It's more or less um, just to be a uh, unique, simple-looking PC. It looks like, actually, we can lock down this panel up top. Sorry, I'm just looking at the screws and stuff. But the net guy, thank you very much for the super chat. You did not have to send that my way, but now I feel accomplished because I got it working. <laughs> um and then, so I'll read over a couple comments here that we got. Um, KB, just joined the colored dough. Matches your personality. Matches my personality. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what that means, but thanks. Uh, thanks, you like the, thanks that you like the color or whatever. Um, yeah, it's t the color, again, is called Crimson Blue. Caribbean Blue. I'm sorry. It's in the description of the... I've got a parts list down below. The parts list in the description is exactly what I used tonight. Again, uh, to reaffirmate the disclaimers that I did earlier, that since uh, I've got some new joiners here, um, this wasn't particularly surrounded to be a build guide that you normally would expect with my live streams that are we're targeting a specific budget and we're building to that budget. This was I had some parts on hand and Cooler Master provided some parts to show off the the case. This is a relatively new case, the NR200P. Um, they have them in different colors, so if this isn't your cup of tea as far as color, then they've got them in black, white, I think orange. Uh, there's multiple colors. Just check out the link on in the description. You can check that out. And it's a relatively good price case for an ITX build because they can get really expensive in terms of cases. And from what I've seen here through this build, really good features. I really like everything that was provided, so pretty good value in that. And um, I really like the look. I like the white and teal or Caribbean blue as they call it <clears throat> yep it's alive uh, from room Hilga sorry if I'm mispronouncing your, your name there but yep it's running and uh, stay tuned to the next video that I'm gonna do a summary of how I'm gonna use this PC Jonathan talks hardware thanks again man for this the additional super chat I appreciate that so much and she's running let's go um, Okay, guys, um, I think that pretty much covers the... Uh, John says, I love the new camera angle, and uh, it, you powered it. And you powered it, though. We'll check on the final pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I was misreading what you said. Yeah, there's going to be some final pictures of this build tidied up. Obviously, cables are really hard to deal with in ITX builds, especially since I'm not putting in a GPU that would hide some of that, so... I'll get it all nice and tidied up and throw some pictures in my Discord channel. So, guys, make sure you check out the Discord channel. It's been live for a little while now. Um, link in the description of this video and in my About section of my YouTube channel. Thanks again, Cooler Master, for sending on over these parts. Uh, definitely, I'm really liking the look. And uh, we've got ourselves a pretty nice little build. So, thanks for tuning in to this one, guys. Appreciate your time. And I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy.